Hello. In this video, I'm going to address the topic of I have a table of data and I need to plot a graph, but what scale do I use on my axes? So how do I get this data onto my graph so that it's using a systematic range with a nice neat scale that is divisible by 10, ones, twos, fives, tens, and multiples thereof. <clears throat> And how do I also ensure that it covers more than half of the grid? So I will be giving you some examples and showing you a method for doing this. This is my first set of data, nice easy set of data, starting at zero, going up in some almost round values there, and some slightly less round ones here. And what I wanna do is I wanna put that onto this graph grid. All of the graph grids I'll be using in this example are 10, by 14 large squares vertically and horizontally. So in order to use more than half of the graph grid, what I need to do is I need to make sure that the vertical separation of my maximum and minimum points is larger than five large squares. Okay, so they might appear here, 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 some of there, but it, the vertical separation needs to be more than five large squares. The horizontal separation of my maximum and minimum data points needs to be more than seven since I've got 14 squares in this direction. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. <clears throat> so like I said, this is my first set of data. I've got load against extension. This is a Hooke's law experiment. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put that onto my graph grid. Now before I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, for, this is going to be my X data, this is going to be my Y data. What I'm going to do is find out the difference between these and divide it by how many squares it needs to cover, which in our case is 14. And we'll use that as, the, as a way of determining the increment that should go on the X axis per large square. And then we'll do the same process for the extension data. So we find out the difference between my maximum and minimum, divided by the number of squares, which on the y axis is 10, that will tell me roughly what to use for the increment for the y axis. Now when we do that, we still need to find a systematic value, so it, or, or a value that's neatly divisible by 10. So it needs to be a multiple of 1, 2, 5, 10. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So starting with the x data, the difference is 5.9 minus 0, so when it's minus 0, it's obviously the same value, so that's nice and easy. We've got 5.9, as if I just write an x here, this is my x data, 5.9 minus 0 over uh, in the x direction we're dealing with 14 squares. Okay, so that is going to come out as 0.14. So what this means is that in order to use, in order to fit that data exactly so it's using 10 uh, large squares, uh, if I use 0 0.42 per large square, that would, that would do that for me. My first point would be on the, on the, first, um, the first, line, first grid line, and my last point would be on the last. But obviously 0 0.42 doesn't neatly divide uh, so what it's helpful to do here is just double this. That's um, times two is 0 0.84. And what that tells me is if I use 0 0.84 per large square, then I would use exactly half of the grid. So as long as I'm between these two values, then I will be using more than half of the grid, okay? Because this is essentially 5.9 minus zero divided by seven. Okay, if I double this. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose a nice value, neatly divisible by 10, between these two figures. And an obvious candidate is 0 0.5. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use 0 0.50 for my x increments. So now that's my x data done. I'm going to repeat the process for the y data, the extension. So in the y direction, we have 20.8 minus zero again, divided by 10, 2.1, so 2.08 with 2.1. And if I multiply that by two, 4.2. 
Now I choose um, neatly divisible value, neatly divisible by 10 in between those. So uh, what I did is I used 2.5. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the scales onto the axes and we'll see what that looks like. In both cases we're starting at zero anyway, so this is quite an easy exercise. So in the x direction we start at zero and we're going up in 0.5s. So what I'll do is I'll label every second uh, square. Remember per large square we're going up in 0.5s, so this will be ones. Okay, so all my plots are going to go in there because the largest was 5.9. You can appreciate that 5.9 will be over here, 0 is over here, so I'm definitely using more than half the grid there. Okay, in the y direction, with 0, we're going up in 2.5, so every second square labelling that will be 5. Okay, so where do the, where would the points end up here? So again, it's like zero, and it's 20.8, so it's just about 21, so just under there. So you can see I'm using more than half the grid there. My points are gonna be nicely spread out over the graph grid. That's important because then we are doing accurate graph work when we take readings from our line to work out gradient, y intercept and so on. Okay, so that's our first set of data done. So just to remind you of the process again. Find the difference in your x data. I'll show you the difference in the x data divided by the number of squares that you've got. And if you double that, then you're trying to pick a value that's neatly divisible by 10 in that range. So there we go. Do the same for your y data.